this and in one week jedi jedi go start to run away we must to learn to respect our african medicine our doctors must to go to learn how to make research but 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 them go they release the day them go they It's about 10 minutes before 6 o'clock. You're tuned to WXP on Roots Rock Reggae. And in the studio with us is none other than Augustus Pablo. Greetings, Pablo. Greetings in the name of the most I last year. We're all looking forward to your uh, show tonight. You played once before in Philly a, a few years back. Do you remember that? I think it was with the Whalers at the Chestnut Cabaret. Yeah, with my band, yeah, Rockers International and Whalers, yeah. And you have a, a, a new LP out, Blowing... With the wind, blowing with the wind, right? Yeah. And that's on Shannerkey. It's in the stores, and yeah. uh, just want to, we, you know, just short time. Just want to touch on a couple little uh, topics. Uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about your history, all the different people you've worked with. I see you're um, on this latest uh, Israel Vibration praises, and um, Yami Bolo. You worked with him. Do you yeah. produce that? Yeah, well, yeah, well, is that, you know, between me and Julian, they get or produce him together, you know. Now, do you mostly do, do you travel around a lot, or you mostly work just uh, in Jamaica, or you go to England, or? What do you mean, like, like, explain, um, like, well, when you're the, traveling around, doing what? I, I mean, like, I mean. as far as the productions, do, are your productions mostly in based Jamaica, in Jamaica? In Jamaica, I mm. see. Uh, various studios, or do you have your own studio? No, I do have a studio. I just use different studios, you know? I see. Like a um, music work studio, or dynamics, or tough guy. Right. And your latest LP is it is it strictly dub music or uh, you going into vocals? What well, can we look for on I'll that? I have one vocal on it, and I don't. Well, that album is not a dub el- album, you know, because dub is something different. Like what you're playing right now is dub, right? Mixed, right? But I play instrumental, you know. I see. And a vocalist on that album. Okay. And what vocalists are are you using? No, well, I sing on the album. Oh, but I I'm using okay. the vocals. All right, I see. I wasn't. It's really my question. album, so no one is good to sing on it. Right. Okay. Right. This one, uh, this one here was a real groundbreaker for you. King Tubby meets the Rockers Uptown. Yeah. I, I think it really kind of set the pace and kind of brought a lot of people's attention to dub music. Do you, do you feel that that happened for you with this L- this LP? With which one? Um, Blowing with the wind. No, you, this one we're listening to now. Yeah. You say if I feel what? If it like broke ground as far as uh, you know. For like dub music, introducing people to that kind of a sound. Well, yeah, well, at the time when it came, it was really, no one was really mixing dub in stereo. And that was what um, me and Tubbies come up with at that time, you know, from that period of time. That's mm-hmm. really, that's at least 20 years ago still, you know. Wow. Yeah, it just lived through time still, but it's over 20 years that now. Still sounds fresh. Yeah, right. Um, I wanted to touch a little bit on, on your history. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Hugh Mundell. About yeah. I played some Hugh Mundell. I guess what you guys were in the in the car on the way over. We played One Jaw, One Aim, One Destiny. Yeah. And he's got records out there, but he doesn't really get a lot of attention. You want to talk about him, your relation with him in the music business? Yeah, well, I, well, I discovered him when, when I was about nine years old, you know? And I kind of... To start to take care of him from him about 12 because his father brought him and leave him with me so I look after him till him about 17 or 18 then everyone came in like his father and everybody started doing all these big things and Pablo wasn't on the scene again so I just continued doing my works because that's the way it is you know I just come to I never really come to control no artists or anything like that but just to just show them what I can you know and assist him along the way still right within the works at the most I 
But I just wanted to say, he was cut down at a very young age. How, how old was he actually when that, the... Uh, well, about 22, you know, about 22. And he was actually shot in Jamaica, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, the story that I heard was that um, Junior Reed was in the car with him when that yeah, happened? Yeah, yeah, right. The bullet missed Junior Reed head by, you know, inches. Wow. Oh. It's a real shame. It must be kind of rough. You never know when you're going <laughs> to... When your time is done. Well, uh, just, you see, I have to just move right, you know. If I move right... Everything will right, you know, but you have to watch the company you keep because those those people, who, the person who shot him was his friend also. So you have to really understand that. And so who needs friends like that, right? Right. He, he had locked up his friend, brother, in uh. jail. And, you know, the way they look at it in Jamaica, they say Rastaman don't need police. So, you know, maybe that was his kind of mix up because that created a vibe. Maybe he should have tried and reason to talk to the bridge and more than, you know, tried to send him to jail. Right. Now tell me, um, I mentioned a little earlier, um, Israel Vibration, have you worked with them for a while or is this a new project? Um, you did some overdubs and some playing on their uh, praises. No, but I've, if you follow the history good, I've worked with Israel Vibration from the start. Okay. Yeah, if you follow the history good. Right. Israel Vibration, they don't leave me out, you know. I don't know if it's because they're lame and I was in certain lame state in certain time. So we have a connection with the powers and most time because they always send for me. Because they are the who they always send for me. Because I don't really play for people out there. So you're connected with them for a long time. Yeah, from the start. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take a listen to one of the things from. Um, let me see what we got here. Orig- original rockers. I wanted to play uh, Warika Hill. You want yeah. to talk about about like the origin? I guess what I'm trying to say is the thought of your music. Is, is a lot of times it seems like it's connected to a, a certain thought. Yeah. Like the origin of the thought is what I'm trying to get at. Right. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like like how you come up with your concepts for, for sounds and music? Oh. Well, it all depends on the place, the time, how we're in the meditation. Because you know? sometimes I think about Danjaman and I create a sound that like within the sense of Danjaman, you know? Okay, I can relate to that. Yeah. Or if I'm, you know, by the riverside, or it, does, it all depends, and it's just meditation and the feelings. Okay, you know. So we're gonna get into that, and we'll we'll uh, talk a little bit. We got about five minutes left, so we're gonna play some of that, all and right. then we'll come right back. Okay, cool runners.
If you're just joining us, you're tuned to WXPN 88.9. Roots Rock Reggae and in the studio with us tonight, very special guest. He'll be performing tonight at the Trocadero, 10th and Arch. So he'll make it on down there, Augustus Pablo. And in the background, Warika Hill. Pablo, tell me a little bit about Warika Hill. I never actually visited. Is it in Kingston? Yeah, well, yeah. This is, um, it's the back part of Beverly Hills, but it's, it's all those hills that join up together, you know? But, you have a certain section where um, a lot of the rasters you know, go up there and chant the drums, and man, you know, you have different kind of vibration up there, you know, different kind of people. So There's like a ground nation area. Yeah, but a lot Naya of different Bingy. kind of people. Not not now you're being alone. Not you, know. you have a lot of gun people live up in that side too, you know. A lot of guns fire at night in those areas. So, like you said a minute earlier, you just have to be careful and just live right. Yeah, because um, you see them them. In, in the early days, I used to just name songs off of the different um, eras and the different vibes, you know, of the people, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, what we got lined up now, we can talk a little bit over this, is uh, Don D special. Yeah. From a 12 inch that you did. So maybe we could talk about his his special spot for you in reggae music, along, you know, where he fits in for you as a musician, as a man. Well, Don D, you know, Don, Don D's whole inspiration of the world. Vibes with an instrumental car. Although he had Tom McCook and all those different horn man, but Dandri was he was the vibes of the artist, you know. And two, I you know, over the years I don't really say them really done a special thing for Dandy really. So he said when I can observe all the things that people don't do for people. And these are the things that I kinda penetrate to push out back to the creation to make people kinda notice it because I just name it after that vibe because it's a sound I hear at the time, you know. Although I didn't use my metal can blow it, but I had to put out something for Dandy, you know, in my own way. Right. Yeah. When you were coming up, you listened to a lot of the Scatolites and all that and all that good music, like uh, Tommy and, and yeah, all man, those guys. Yeah, man, I listened to all of them, man. Jack me too, you know. All, all, anything to do with instrumental. I have them all taped inside here. Right. Now, how how was it that you, you came to choose melodica as your as your form of expression? Well, it just it's like an instrument I had to play with, you know. I used to just play with it all the time. So, um, a person called Herman Chinlai, he saw my instrument one day when I was buying some records. He tried a sound called Rockers International. So, I used to go, out, go to the record shop and buy records, and he saw my instrument. Really, I really carried it to just make him see me with it, because I didn't really want somebody to carry me into the studio. And those days, it was really hard to even go near the studio door. And Herman see me with the, the, um, the instrument, and he said, um, can you play that instrument? And I said, yeah, because I'm saying I was looking for a new sound, because I'm tired of the organ sound, all this kind of sound. Kind of music, every time you use a certain number of things, kind of get played out. Yeah, so they, just, they always love to hear about new sound. And that was a new sound, so, so we tried it and it worked, you know. First song I did was a song called Iggy Iggy, and um, East of the River Nile. I did it for, I did it for Herman Chinai first, years ago, even before the one that I put out. And you know, after that I went to Randy's and did Java and this is Augustus Pablo album. Right. Yeah. All right, well we really look forward to seeing it tonight and everybody come on down to the Chocadero and uh, the show lasts about two hours? Well something like that. Um no not so well about oh and four to five minutes. But a nice set something like that. I'm yeah. sure it'll be a real nice set, look forward. Now how many people we got in your band? You got a large band this time or? Um well just seven, you know, seven of us. Seven. Yeah. All right. Yeah, man. Give thanks for coming by. Yeah, give thanks and most. All right. You're tuned to WXPN Roots Rock Reggae, and we're a little bit over our time. In just a minute, we'll turn over the controls to Bill Keith and the best in urban vocal harmony. <laughs> 